Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, and today I'm going to be taking a hardware sidestep from my usual game content and talk about PC hardware. Specifically, I am going to talk about a simple little case cooling hack that I am doing on my new system that appears to be working. It is a simple hack that in fact can be tried with nothing but a piece of cardboard, and even in my finished version is just a piece of acrylic plastic available at any craft or hardware store. First of all, a quick overview of my system, which is the first system I've built with the goal of being both gaming and content creation. It uses an Alder Lake i9-12900K processor, 32GB of DDR4 memory, since DDR5 was impossible to find at the time, and a Z690 motherboard. Initially, I reused an old GTX 1660 Ti graphics card, as this was near the peak of the Ethereum mining craze, which I quite accurately predicted would come to a crashing halt in mid-2022. So with those plummeting prices, I very recently changed that card to an RTX 3080, which meant I had to take a much more serious look at the cooling of my system. Why? You see, in current PCs, cooling is computing. The K-series chips and Z-series motherboards will auto-overclock under load if you are not overheating, and auto-throttle their clock speeds if they do overheat. Modern graphics cards will do exactly the same. So if you don't have a system with enough cooling, you won't get the full ability out of the money you have spent either on your processor or your graphics. Cooling is computing. The case here is a fractal design Meshify 2 Compact, but honestly there are quite a number of cases that follow the same basic airflow design characteristics. Two or three big fans pulling in fresh dust filtered air through a mesh front panel, a mesh top panel for exhaust, and a fan in the rear for extra exhaust and a glass front for being able to see where all your money went. I found a Black Friday deal on a 240mm all-in-one water cooler for the processor and nothing special on the graphics card since I knew that I was going to be changing it. The current standard on graphics cards is to pull air in from the underside when mounted like this and then blow the hot air all over the place. With a case like this, there are two places to put the all-in-one radiator and fans. The first is the front of the case, pulling in air which uses cool outside air for the radiator, but this then heats the entire case, including the graphics card, with air heated by the processor. So good for cooling the processor, bad for cooling the graphics. The second, which is what I used, is to put it at the top of the case blowing out. This does a great job of getting the processor heat out of the case without it ever getting in, but it means that the air being pushed over the radiator has been preheated by the graphics card. With the 1660 Ti, that heat was minimal, but not with the 3080. There's also a third choice given by the case manufacturers of putting the radiator at the bottom of the case, but anything that makes the pump the highest point in the loop is a very bad idea. Don't do it. And then a word about the fans. As you see, I have RGB lighted fans, but none of those pulsating disco lighting displays. God, I hate those. But what I did want was to be able to just glance at my computer and immediately know the state of the thermals. You know, something useful. But surprisingly few RGB lighting systems have that. One that does is the Corsair IQ Commander, which has two temperature probes and software support for controlling fan speed and lighting color independently based on temperatures. So the top RGB fan is based on CPU package temperature. Blue is at 40 degrees centigrade or lower, green is at 60, and red is at 80 or above, with shades in between. Fan speed is also based on CPU package temperature, with a curve at 25% at 30 degrees or cooler, up to 100% at 80 degrees. The upper rear fan to the left is colored based on the GPU temperature on the same scales, but the speed is controlled by the upper case air temperature, with zero fan up to 30 degrees and up to 100% at 50 degrees. The upper front fan to the right is colored based on the upper inside air temperature with blue at 30 degrees or lower, green at 40 degrees, and red at 50 degrees or higher. And the speed is also controlled by the upper air case temperature, with 25% power up to 30 degrees, rising on an S-curve to 100% at 50 degrees. The lower front case fan is set the same way as the upper case fan, but it is based on the temperature of the air in the lower case. Now, as we can tell right now at idle, everything is nice and cool and blue, so let's fire up Star Citizen and see what happens. After a few minutes, you see that the CPU is indeed in the upper 80s, which is not alarming since the goal of the Z-Series motherboard and K-Series chip is to push the processor faster when under load until it reaches that point. And the same story for the GPU. Although the GPU isn't working as hard as the CPU, referencing that Star Citizen 3.17.1 is indeed CPU bound. But we already knew that. 
But the interesting thing is how much warmer the upper air is than the lower air. The combination of the suction of the radiator fans and convection is pulling the GPU heat into the upper case, where it is reducing the cooling ability of the radiator. As I said, the common criticism of this configuration. But what if there was some way to keep that heat down in the bottom half of the case? I've seen plenty of examples of rack mount server cases where the builders used baffles and tunnels to direct their air onto particular components like the heat spreaders and memory. Could I do something similar in a very ordinary desktop case? So I made a panel that is held in front pinched between the two fans and the back resting on top of the indent for the expansion card rack. I found the shape by experimenting by trimming a piece of cardboard. And in fact, the cardboard version works just as well. I only change it to the acrylic version for appearance. Now, the fit of the piece is not perfect. There are small gaps all around and a substantial gap where I only made one notch for the memory. Yet despite the gaps and the fact that the upper air chamber is certainly at a negative pressure over the bottom and the fact that convection is working against it, the heat stratification is almost entirely reversed by this simple addition of a piece of plastic or cardboard. Now I may need to compensate with a more aggressive fan curve on the lower fan, but that is a separate matter from whether the panel is doing its job. And with the upcoming 40 series of cards reportedly drawing about 30% more power than the current 30 series of cards, the problem of managing your graphics card heat out of the case before it bakes everything else is going to get even bigger. Remember, cooling is computing. Now I'm sure many gearheads are preparing comments about how this isn't a thorough and controlled scientific study, and I'll agree, and it isn't meant to be. I don't have the time or resources of a Gamer Nexus or Jay's Two Cents or any of the other serious testing channels whose work I genuinely admire and who could do a far better job of really testing this hack that I deliberately didn't want to present this video as if it really was. That's why I'm not getting lots of specific numbers regarding a wide variety of games and benchmarks and different types and different similar cases, even if I could. I'm just a creative guy with a computer and an architecture background who tried something with a piece of cardboard, and it worked for me. And you only need a piece of cardboard too to try it for yourself. And if it doesn't work for you, well, throw out the cardboard. And now a word for my usual Star Citizen viewers. You already know about the ship giveaways, you just need to know the secret word, right? And the secret word for this video is either of the two channels I said would be able to do a far better job of testing this hack out. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.